Welcome to Pagan Crafting. I'm Kara. I'm your local art witch and green witch. And today I have an exciting collaboration. I am doing a collaboration with Beverly Butterfly from the United Kingdom. Now we've come together to do this collaboration with absolute excitement and like-mindedness and thriftiness and it just came together we're two crafters and we're two thrifty she's a vintage witch we're both art witches we're both crafters and we came up with Th thrift witch art collab so each month there's going to be a different theme we picked out two themes for this month and each month we're going to hold a challenge and then we're going to challenge other crafters here too so in a moment, stay tuned who I'm going to challenge before I start off here. So we've come together and we've designed a few rules. They're super, super easy. There's always going to be a theme. This month is Tim Burton, your own interpretation of any one of his movies, or 90s whimsical goth. Beverly came up with these ones. So awesome. I love these ones. So... The other thing is you're going to have to design a sigil and hide it somewhere. You're going to represent each witch that is uh, in the challenge. So far, it's Beverly and myself, the first two that are starting. Beverly is going to be represented by a butterfly, of course. And I'm also a mushroom witch, so I'm going to be represented by a mushroom. I do prefer the little red mushrooms with white little dots. Thank you. But you can go for any color because I love them all. And then as each new content creator joins this challenge, we will have something to represent that individual. So while it can be a butterfly, for instance, it could just be a, a kiss on the top of a nose of a frog. It could be little, it could be small, it could be the centerpiece of them all. I didn't mean to rhyme there, but I'm going to just keep going. Yeah. Anyway, um, so another thing we're going to do is with one of the rules is you have to thrift it or find something that's recycle, reuse. This is not an expensive project. Like spend $10 and under, uh, five, five twenty dollars $20 and under Canadian. But the main thing is I would say 20% thrift. Let's go that way. And like 80% what you have at home. So, for example, I had to use some spray paint I can't go buy. I had to use what colors I had here. Luckily, I had uh, enough left over in the can of spray paint to do this project. And again, with paints, if you don't have the color, you can't use it. You can't mix it. You can't go buy it. You have to do without. So that's part of the challenge, too. We don't want you to go buying more art supplies for this challenge. And with the theme, and then you have to take something from the thrift store or reuse it center or something free that you acquired. Now you have to turn that into some art. Turn this piece into a sculpture or a flat piece. It could be a frame. It could be a two-dimensional piece. It could be a multimedia piece. For those of you that are book hounds, maybe it is a glorious different grimoire of a junk journal of witchy awesomeness, right? It could be anything you can think of. Whatever your style is, rock it. Maybe you find an old drape and you turn it into some blanket or some medicine bags into a project. So again, but you got to keep it goth, keep it whimsical, keep it 90s. Or you can do the Tim Burton style uh, I've chosen a few different movies to represent in my teacups that I painted and I get to show you that in just a moment. So again, keep it witchy, keep it cool, keep it cheap, keep it free. I'm going to do mine in two parts. So my part is going to be, uh, I'm going to do the Tim Burton st style first and then I'm going to do the whimsical 90s goth. So again, join me and we're going to have some fun today modifying some teacups and representing Tim Burton. Oh, 
forgot one thing. Okay, I forgot who I was going to challenge. Okay, okay. So, my first person I challenge for this challenge. Dun, 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 dun. And you guys, if you don't want to put the butterfly and the mushroom to represent, because you may not know all the other witches that are doing it, totally cool. I'm going to challenge Jessica and the Moon, Starlight and the Wild Witch, and Das Witchling. So I think those three can come up with something very, 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 very cool. So again, Jessica and the Moon, Starlight the Wild Witch, and Das Witchling, I challenge you. Now you can come up with something that is totally sustainable, that is free. Anywhere that you can scavenge, hunt, find, trade, find something out of nature, find something for free, find some old boards from a barn, make it into something cool that you can add. But as long as you follow the theme, and the theme is either A, anything to do with Tim Burton, any movie, opportunities are endless. Oh my gosh. Stripes, of course. Yeah, anyway. And the other one would be 90s Whimsical Goth. Both an incredible thing to use. So, and you have to design a sigil and hide it. Pick something, a thrift, and turn it into art. Pick a theme. And represent, if you wish, the mushroom and the butterfly and then something to represent you in it. And then you get to challenge the next three people. All right. We're going to have some fun today. Follow me and uh, I know a way. Okay, let's go have some fun. So what I have started here is with some little teacups. This one's from some university games from the 80s. This set I actually bought a couple months ago for another project, but these two I found recently in kind of like, there were some really pretty collectibles, so I didn't want to like paint on them. And then there were some ones that were just like without little saucers, kind of by themselves for $1.99. So I thought those would be cool for the Tim Burton style. Now this was like 20 bucks and I got it for $3, stoked with that. And this is a cage that I found at another thrifting adventure that I thought would be fitting for this. It was super cheap. It was like $3.50 and it's been needing a home it's been needing a little place for a while so what i'm going to do i'm going to have to hide my sigil so this sigil worksheet you can download from my etsy store or if you're a patreon member you get this as part of the package and this sigil says we are all mad here we're, we're all mad here so somewhere this sigil is going to be hidden on the project. I'm going to start off with some spray painting. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do one saucer all black. I can't decide on how I'm going to do this yet. I'm going to do one saucer that's going to be all white. Three teacups are going to be solid black and one teacup that is solid white. Now, luckily, these this is a black flat primer, so I needed a really good flat plate. And my white is a flat extra coat primer as well. So these will dry very, very quickly. I didn't want to go with the gloss paint. I do have a black gloss paint I could use, but I thought the matte finish would look really, really, really sharp. Now taking in with the Tim Burton theme. 
I'm going to do some black and white stripes. I'm thinking I was going to do the Mad Hatter hat, but I went with something else, which I'll show you at the end. Then I'm going to do all the suits of the, of the cards with a mushroom. And then on a plate, I'm going to design the checkerboard finish here. So first what I'm going to do is I'm going to be drawing everything on before I'm going to paint it on. Freehand is fun, but I want this, I want this pretty tight looking. So I think I'm going to freehand my last cup, which I'm going to be doing the nightmare before Christmas moonlit hill scene. And that one's cool enough to rock freehand, but we'll do it. Uh, We'll do it by some drawing on some pencil lines for these little gaffers. So this one, I'm going to take the solid white cup and I'm going to do black stripes only on this cup. Take your time. I just drew, drew on the stripes first. And I'm going to do the stripes all the way around the cup from the bottom of the cup all the way to the inside. I have thinner lines as, as it progresses to the bottom and fatter lines at the top would just look super sharp. And then once you go to the inside, you taper it down into the cup as well. And it's going to look really cool. I'm just so excited to be able to paint these. I've never modified teacups before. After I was looking up on Pinterest for some Alice in Wonderland teacup ideas, I found Tim Burton teacups. Oh my gosh. I had no idea this was a thing. Modified teacups and modified uh, teapots. Wow. I think I need to do more. Comment down below with a mushroom if you want me to do another modified teacup set. Oh. What kind of theme should I do next? Throw me down an idea with your mushroom idea. Mm -hmm. So what I'm using here is not a crafting acrylic paint. It is, uh, well, the red's a crafting acrylic paint, but I'm using a for my black and my white. I'm using a painter's acrylic and it, it's a one coat wonder. The stuff is, it's for my canvas, but it's a little on the, the upscale side of probably quality and price. But this red, I could not find the right one. And so this craft paint at the dollar store for $1.50 is exact red that I need. I am picky when it comes to my reds. So I'm going to be doing the heart and the diamonds in red, and then the clubs and the spade in white, because it can't be black. But I think it'll look neat that way. And then I'll help offset the little mushroom that I'm doing with the white and the red too. Eek! Oh, it's so cute! So the little mushroom represents me and then I'm going to have another teacup with a little butterfly on there that's going to represent Beverly. And again, I'm using my painter's acrylics, my canvas acrylic paints because it's just like a one hit. It was a really nice thick coating. If you do use the crafter's paint uh, on these teacups or your tea, tea uh, pots, it is good to do a primer coating. So I would rock a spray paint on it. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a primer paint, uh, but I would suggest a flat paint and not a gloss until you're ready to spray gloss shine it up. 
So now we're gonna paint a little butterfly for the next one, for our little next teacup. And this one is the Corpse Bride Butterfly. You'll see at the very beginning of the movie and a little bit here and there throughout the movie. Now those black rickety vines, branches, ivies, whichever you wish to call them. Now those one were in part of the movie when he was pretending or practicing to propose. So those ones, because I can't do it in black because I'm going to use the cup as black, we're going to rock those ones in white. But I have a white gel pen I'm going to use for that. So again, just laying down a base coat first of some royal blues. And I took my time with the, with the baby blues and bringing in the sky blues. You just freehand mix them. Don't worry about being perfect with your color mixes because you'll get some like really cool transitions of the color coming through. And you can just print off a paint picture, what I have here, and mix up the paint as per the picture and just take your time. Now, while that's drying a little bit, I'm gonna start bringing in this gel pen. Ooh! It worked out fabulous on spray paint. This is the first time using it on spray paint. I got it for my Grimoire book series, actually, this gel pen. <gasps> but I thought this is needed. And for the little antennas. sketched on a few of these on the front I think they're so cool I'll give you a little hint I hid my sigil somewhere on this cup And so after the butterfly dried, I saw that the lighter blue that I painted on the main part of the wings dried darker. So I'm actually just hitting it with an even lighter color again. And I didn't like the white lines in between, so I just painted over them. You can change your mind, paint over it, especially with acrylic. It's wonderful that way. Not as forgiving. Watercolor is definitely a little bit harder, but the acrylic is very nice to play with. If you don't like it, paint over it. Make a mistake, paint over it. No one's the wiser. Okay, so I was going to do the Mad Hatter's hat, but I realized I can't. Tim Burton didn't do the Mad Hatter green hat. That was original, original movie. So original cartoon. So I'm going to be doing the Nightmare Before Christmas. So we're going to lay down the, the midnight sky. I'm quite surprised that the purple, even though I went with like a pinkish purple, 
magenta was still drawing quite dark so up close and personal it looks pretty badass but it really dried quite dark on the black finish so as you see here i was building up the layers and just working with it i was really surprised i had to bring in this pink with the magenta purple just to try to make it look like purple and it still dried quite dark but it looks so perfect there's just enough just enough purple but the camera doesn't quite pick it up when I did the final shots. Adding some royal purple to the top now over top of the black, just kind of a wash. And the black will still come through nicely and the purple won't be that dark, but enough that it'll punch out the sky. Letting that dry. Now, if I would have had enough paint on that brush, that would have been, bam, I would have made that circle. So using a lion yellow and a sunflower yellow, did some blending and shading it in. painting this one with a royal purple this royal purple will go on almost like a black so I'm not mixing it in it is one of my uh, really nice purples it's like an eggplant purple oh mix it in with some black then we'll build up some lighter lavenders on top of that in just a moment And I wound up painting over all that uh, beautiful pinkish purple. <laughs> So what you can also do with this one, you could also add the orange pumpkins, but I thought the orange would just really take away from this piece right now. So in a tribute to the pumpkins, I did put a pumpkin inside the cup, which I possibly may not have filmed. Because sometimes I just like, ooh, this will look cool. And then I add to it and I forget that I was supposed to film it. It's kind of neat. And then I'm already like committed. So then I don't stop, stop, film it and go, oi. Someday I'll remember to get it all in. And I also missed filming as I painted the checkerboard plate, but I thought it was pretty redundant. Like it's, it is what it is to, to watch someone paint checkerboard is, I don't know. I don't know if I could. It's not that interesting. Rock it in the shading over top of little mountain regions everywhere with some of that violet. Then coming back over with the royal purple and some black. Because those hills are just about that eggplant black. So this is how this cup turned out, the Stripey Dude Cup. I'm well chuffed with this one. Our Beverly Butterfly Cup, yay, with For the Corpse Bride. Thank you. 
Now this one, I painted a little heart in the center. This one has the mushroom on it for me. And this one represents Alice in Wonderland. Oh, and the stripey cup just represents straight up Tim Burton. There's my little pumpkin inside. Oh, there we go. I love this one. I love the purple progression. Ooh, that sounds like a good poem name, purple progression. And then I wound up going with only one saucer. There's a little pumpkin. So here is a final piece, crazy glued and balanced together. Here is my sculpture. My tribute to Tim Burton. There is my sigil, if you just saw it. I wound up hiding it in afterwards. Well, thank you so very much for chilling out with me today. And stay tuned for part two. It'll be the 90s whimsical goth theme. Thrift Art Witch Challenge. And have yourself an absolutely magical day.